getting closer and closer finalizing this thing hopefully i get to mate this with the uh, b-series transmission but today's episode is all about the timing belt we get to see on how i put the timing belt on a g-series motor Pretty much like it's all the same as the H22, F20B, and also the H23A blue top. Since they all share the same parts and everything. But yours will be different, of course. Uh, as far as the tensioning, the belt and everything. This is what I'm using, gates. That's the part number. If you want to choose the uh, blue ones, by all means. Since this is a NA setup, I'm not really putting so much horsepower on this thing. So I'm okay to use this one. I have used this on a turbocharged engine also and I never had any problem with it. Yeah, something you can trust. Whether you use OE, OE is even better. And I picked up some uh, <laughs> bling bling factor, as you can see. This is made by VMS. I did a lot of research on VMS and uh, it's got a, quite a bit of a, a good uh, reviews on it. So I said, uh, I want to give it a try. Why I picked green color, I was supposed to pick a blue one. For somehow I have picked the green one, but uh, yeah, I guess it will be okay. And also I picked up a Downstar ink just to fasten that one. Crank pulley, this happened to be an OBD2 uh, pulley from uh, H23A blue top. And the part number, it looks like it's a P1B. Not a three, it's a B at the end. If you happen to be using an OBD1 style, you're not gonna have this back plate right here. This is for a pickup, for a sensor. Otherwise, you have to use one of those, uh, more like a spacer. This will be after it. It's more like to keep a space for the timing belt so you will not be riding onto this just in case it walk on you or something. Since I'm deleting the uh, balance shaft, this is what I'm gonna use. That used to be one piece that I cut it off and just kinda just massage it. And that's what I'm gonna use. For this one here, I'm just going to keep this one, the old one, to hold that thing in place. Yeah, I kind of like this little parts upgrade. It really makes it pops. Yeah, looking good already. It looks fast just sitting there, you know. <laughs> this one requires 15 uh, pounds of foot. Yours will be different. Always check your manufacturer's suggestion specs. Yeah. I will recheck all the torque afterwards. I'm gonna line those up together. Just a setup. There. Make sure you're on uh, top dead center. That's for the number one piston. If you're not sure, always put a, a, a long screwdriver or anything that you could stick on there. And to verify, 
just give this a tug you will hear that that sound so meaning you are on top dead center for the number one piston set that and align your camshafts together if you can this is set at zero not sure if the camera can pick it up though but uh, yeah it's set at zero this is tight this is what they call your maintenance bolt right here it allows the uh, timing belt tensioner to fully force it down and then secure it and I have the uh, spring on there which has a, a lot of tension on it for your belt it doesn't matter which way you want the, the name logo it's up to you but I prefer it myself to be facing this way so uh, if you're facing on the front side of the uh, motor you can actually read it but there's no uniform on this one it's up to you first wrap your uh, belt on the lower part at the crank route it like so and stretch it till it lands or hit the teeth if it doesn't line up make sure just move it around either up or down but make sure that line is aligned to the flange of the cylinder head second it's the same thing maintain that alignment it looks like I need to this is a new belt so it will take a little bit of a there you go So do whatever you can to slide it in. I got it on. I maintain those alignment together. And then when it comes down to here, I'm going to loosen this up. And loosen the maintenance service bolt right there. See how it pops like that? Secure it back in. Tighten this. Let me set this up. And tight. Check the belt tension. So once you guys are satisfied on how you uh, laid out your timing belt. And this one has been pulled. So it has a little bit of tension on there. It's not quite the tension that we need yet make sure this is tight it's very important do not turn the assembly if this is loose if you have that one tight then it's okay but always rely on this one not that one this one all right i'm gonna turn it just one turn only that way i can show you the next step I'm gonna start lining those two together. Okay. If you missed it, okay, that's good enough. Do not back up, okay? All right, that's good for now. And let's see what the, uh... all right, it's a little bit off, but let me see if I can line that up and see what happened to there, okay? Let me turn that. A little bit sorry for the background noise my neighbor is mowing his lawn I just said do not back up right all right let me one more time just turn it slow that will prevent if any of the belt will jump because you're not quite set up for the tension yet I just need a little bit okay I'm center it looks like the camshaft will be needing a little bit of adjustment but no biggie that's why I got these adjustable cam gears for that purpose pay attention on this 
on the slappiness of the belt. I'm gonna move the uh, the cam gears or the whole assembly about three teeth. So one, two, and three, right about this fang right here, this one right there. I'm gonna line that up to the flat side of the cylinder head. It doesn't have to be precise. So one, two, and three right there. Now check out the tension. Now it's a little bit sloppy here. Look at this. What just happened is I put some tension on this side of the belt and made this belt to relax. Next is the maintenance service bolt. Not sure if you see it, that it goes up a little more. And that's it. The belt tension is set. That's how easy it is. Make sure to, uh, to tighten the nut again. And torque this maintenance service bolt. I'm going to turn it again and recheck. So I got this thing tight. That's tight. And I'm going to set the piston, number one piston to top dead center. All right, it's coming up. We check again. Right there and the line this is the point where you'll say eh, I think it's okay it'll be all right it can use uh, a fine tuning but it's good for me it's good but to double check that right here there's an inspection window here where you could drop in a, uh, a rig pin or your drill bit or an allen wrench the camshaft have a, uh, a pre-manufactured hole in it. This is not something that you could see on the textbook for H22, right there, that hole. And I found myself a, a perfect size drill bit that fits over in that hole. You could use Allen wrench if you like. Now I found this, uh, or I discovered this about two years ago when I was uh, adjusting the AEM. The H23A1, it has an instructions from Honda service manual to uh, use a, a dowel pin that you can insert before you set your timing belt and all that. While looking around on the service manual, I said, wait a minute, yeah, it has this inspection hole. Let me see what it does. See, if you drop the, the right or the correct size, it drops right in. So this one is perfect. This one is okay. Yeah, it's not, uh, I don't have a hard time dropping it in. For the intake side, it can use a little bit of a, towards this way, but it's not binding or anything. So meaning, it is good. And that's it. For some of you that have a problem aligning the timing belt together with the top dead center and these two lines right here, and you are forced to get a cam gears, adjustable one, because you sent your cylinder head to the machine shop and maybe possible that they shave it so much. And also maybe you, uh, you have your uh, block re-sleeve and of course, you know, they're gonna shave it. And that's what's gonna happen. That's where the cam adjustable gears will come in play. You decided to get an adjustable gears, thinking that, uh, yeah, I wanna correct it, right? And then you're asking yourself or asking around, hey, where do I set this up? How would I know that I'm doing it correctly? So there it is right here. 
align your camshafts, you know, set it at zero degrees and use a dowel pin or allen wrench, drop it on there if it goes in or if it doesn't, then loosen this up and then turn your camshaft slowly till this thing will drop in place like so. Then tighten that one and then you're golden. So this one, it looks like I don't need to touch anything. It could use a little bit adjustment, but there's no need to. I'm able to, uh, to drop in this drill bit on there. Or if you're using an Allen wrench. So it's all good. So let me secure all of this. Give it a torque. Downstar Inc. didn't provide the torque specs on these two bolts. But I'm going to use Honda specs, which is 37 pounds of foot. This one is tight. All the bolts are torqued and secured. And I'm gonna give it a uh, another full turn. And I'm going to wrap this video from here. doesn't interfere with the valve cover. The G23 long block is finally completed. That's with the timing belt and everything. Next stop will be mating it with the transmission and put it in the engine bay. And this is how I install the timing belt on the G series. You can apply the same uh, techniques on H22, H23A blue top, and also F20B. It's the same concept. Like and share. Hit that like button. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys back. Next episode. I recommend to always put a flag. Or some kind of means of identifying. That you have your dowel pin or allen wrench on there because if you start using this you can it happened to me you can accidentally turn this with your allen or dowel pin still in it